ever get that feeling? You know, like when you're stuck with a coworker or even ugh, a boss and the whole vibe just feels kind of dot off, toxic even. Yeah, we've all been there. It's like this invisible weight. You know? Yeah. And I got to say, more often than not, it seems like there's some serious bullying going on underneath it all. It's sad how common that is. So today we're doing a deep dive on bullying at work. But not the surface stuff. We're getting into the nitty gritty of why it happens, especially how bad leadership plays into it all. Definitely. It's more than just telling people to be nice. Right. We need to go deeper. So I've been digging into this manuscript, Unmasking Bullying, The Role of Ineffective Leadership by Rick Coniglia. Have you seen this one? Oh, yeah. Coniglia doesn't hold back. Tell me about it. It's like he throws a truth bomb right on page one, quoting Eisenhower. You don't lead by hitting people over the head. That's assault, not leadership. Sets the tone. Big yeah. time. But then he does this thing. Okay, so he tells readers, like, as you're going through the book, you should actually write down the names of people you work with who fit his bully profile. Oh, wow. Yeah. And part of me was like, whoa, hold on. That's intense. But then <laughs> there's this other part, right? The part that's like, Wait, maybe he's on to something. It's definitely provocative, but it gets at a really important point that Caniglia hammers home. We often misinterpret what bullying really is, especially at work. We have this image of the schoolyard bully, but it's rarely that obvious in an office setting. Exactly. It's way more insidious. Right. Caniglia dives into the subtle stuff, verbal abuse, cyberbullying, even just excluding someone socially. That stuff can be so much harder to put your finger on. I'm 100%. And when it's that subtle, you start second guessing yourself. Like, is it really happening? Am I being too sensitive? It messes with your head. Yeah. And then he gives all these examples too, like gaslighting or someone messing with your work relationships on purpose. Spreading rumors online, that kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Enough to make anyone paranoid. Did you find yourself thinking of specific people when you were reading those examples. Mm -hmm. I have to admit, a few names definitely popped into my head. Well, I think it's natural to reflect on your own experiences when a topic hits this close to home. And that's what makes Caniglia's approach so interesting. It forces you to confront those situations head on. Totally. Yeah. But like you said, it can be messy too. Because mm -hmm. if you're already feeling bullied, your judgment might be clouded, right? Absolutely. Victims of bullying often experience intense self-doubt which can make it really difficult to see the situation clearly. So even though you might feel that urge to play detective and name names, it's important to tread carefully and consider all sides of the story. And here's where Coniglia throws you for a loop, because he doesn't just stop at blaming the bullies themselves. He goes a step further. Right, he broadies the scope. Exactly. He starts talking about organizational dysfunction, like the whole workplace being messed up, and how that allows bullying to thrive. It's kind of a scary thought, actually. It makes you think about the bigger picture, right? Like, is it really just about a few bad apples, or is there something deeper going on? Yeah, and Caniglia comes right out and says, it's sometimes the barrel itself is rotten. And no surprise, he points a finger directly at leadership, or should I say, the lack thereof. It's so true, though. Think about it. If the people in charge lack empathy, if they're constantly breathing down everyone's necks, playing favorites. Ugh, don't even get me started on the whole favorites thing. It creates this environment where, frankly, bullying can flourish. It's like they're practically giving permission for it to happen. It's like that saying, fish rots from the head down. Right, 100%. Yeah. And Caniglia gets pretty graphic about it, too. He basically says that toxic leaders don't just allow bullying. They actually model it for everyone else. Which is terrifying when you think about it. Totally. And I think that's why it resonates with so many people, because who hasn't had a boss who gets away with murder while demanding everyone else walk on eggshells around them? It's like this unspoken rule. If the boss can dish it out, so can I. Exactly. And that, I think, is the core of Caniglia's argument. It's not just about individual acts of bullying. It's about a whole culture, a system that often rewards bad behavior. But it gets even more unsettling when he starts talking about HR. Oh, yeah. What's his take on them? Because, I mean, you always hear, if something's going on, just go to HR. Right. They're supposed to be the good guys. But Caniglia, well, he's pretty skeptical. He suggests that sometimes HR departments can actually be part of the problem. Wait, really? How so? Well, he suggests that sometimes they might be pressured to cover things up, especially if it involves someone higher up on the food chain. Or, you know, sometimes they just aren't equipped to handle these kinds of situations properly. It's scary to think that the people who are supposed to help might not be able to or even worse, might be told not to. Yeah. So what are we supposed to do then? 
if we can't rely on HR? Does Coniglia offer any solutions? So we're kind of painting a bleak picture here, right? If we can't always count on HR, what are people supposed to do? Does Coniglia offer any hope in this manuscript? He does. He does. It's not all doom and gloom. But, you know, he's also realistic. He's not going to pretend there's some magic bullet solution to fix everything over it. Right, because obviously it's a complicated issue. Exactly. But he does give you some practical steps to take, which is helpful. For example, he talks about setting up ways for employees to report bullying anonymously. Makes sense. So people can speak yeah. up without being afraid of, like, retaliation or whatever. Exactly. And he also talks about bringing in, like, third-party investigators for these kinds of complaints. Oh, that's interesting. So, like, someone from outside the company to look into things. Yeah, to avoid any potential conflicts of interest. So... You know, it's a more impartial investigation. But he's also very clear that none of these things will work unless... Unless what? Unless the leadership is fully on board, like truly committed to creating a respectful workplace. Right, because otherwise it's just window dressing. Right. Like they're just going through the motions. Exactly. And that can actually make things worse, you know, if people feel like they're being lied to. But he also has this other point, which I found really empowering. Oh, yeah. What's that? Well, he says that even if you're not the one in charge you can still make a difference. Okay, I like where this is going. Tell me more. It starts with how you handle things, you know, on a personal level. Like if you see someone getting bullied, you say something. Instead of just like looking the other way, which is easy to do sometimes. On no, the, it's hard, yeah. but it makes a difference. And, you know, not participating in gossip, yes. supporting your coworkers who are being targeted, it all adds up. So it's about having the courage to like take a stand, even in small ways. Yes. And Coniglia's argument is that if everyone did that, if everyone refused to tolerate disrespect, it could actually start to shift things. It's like you're changing the whole vibe, the whole culture of the workplace, just by how you show up every day. Exactly. And that's a powerful message, right? It's not just on HR. It's on all of us. Totally. This has been such a fascinating deep dive. I mean, it can feel overwhelming sometimes dealing with these issues, but... I feel like Coniglia actually gives us some concrete tools to work with. It's like he's saying, OK, it's not going to be easy, but here's where you can start. Absolutely. It's about taking action. So if you had to pick one thing, just one concrete action that a company could take to show that they're serious about stopping bullying in the workplace, not just lip service, but real action, what would it be? That's something for everyone listening to think about. Until next time, thanks for joining us on The Deep Dive.